if you are not willing to learn. No one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. The N2D Lotto app. An ERC20 lottery app that has been written to run fully automated. You are going to learn in this tutorial how to build an application that needs minimal user intervention. The front end has been written to display the current lottery draw ID along with the current ERC20 jackpot amount offered in the prize pool. Every previous draw winning numbers will be displayed in the front end and a function to claim the prize if the player got a ticket, with the winning numbers attached to a claim button for an easy player claim functionality. Also the front end will display up to 6 previous lottery draw winning numbers along with the claim functionality. The application will let players buy lotto tickets using the app's custom ERC20 token. The players will choose 6 ticket numbers from a range of 1 through 20. Once selected, the player will be asked to authorize transfer of the ticket price amount in the custom ERC20 token. The player approves the transaction in the wallet, then proceeds to approve the ticket purchase. Every front-end value obtained has been fetched via the back-end. The front-end is composed of only API calls to the back-end. Of course you will learn how to call all this. Who said that we cannot build a game strictly out of a smart contract. I call this tutorial The Works. It includes everything that you can think of. We are doing some crazy things on this one. We are going to be working with Chainlink and with Chainlink in particular with a VRF because there's something that we need to do is that we need to build a lottery game and this lottery game needs to provide us, the owners of the platform, random numbers. And you might say, why that's such a big deal? Oh, trust me, it is a big deal. Because the blockchain is kind of predictable and you cannot just obtain random numbers by just doing a simple formula to do so because at some point I will obtain the pattern in that particular formula and I am going to be able to guess which are going to be the next numbers. We don't want that because the moment we obtain and we can reverse engineer the function that will give the winning numbers, it's game over. The lottery game is compromised because now anyone can obtain the winning numbers. The problem is with the blockchain, everything is kind of predictable. You can start to see patterns in numbers. I was very, very surprised in doing this entire, entire development in this particular application to see that it's not that easy. That is not just a simple math and, and, and start multiplying and dividing things because at some point, the numbers are going to uh, be kind of similar. They're going to be very similar. So we need to make sure that the source from which we obtain those numbers are not necessarily inside the contract. They're being called by another contract, or in this case, by an external service. With Chainlink, I am going to be obtaining those random numbers. And with those random numbers, I can even do something that will make it even more random. But to start off this amazing tutorial, I am going to be showing you how to, number one, integrate Chainlink VRF into your smart contract. Now we're going to be talking to Chainlink in your smart contract and obtaining values from Chainlink. Number two, I am going to be showing you how we are going to make the transactions more efficient. When I refer to be more efficient, I am referring to the transaction fees. There's a lot. This project is not your ordinary NFT marketplace. It is not your ordinary minting site. It is not your ordinary NFT staking program or application. This is a little bit more advanced but i'm going to guarantee you something if you follow step by step and you're able to do this entire entire project 
on your own because you obtain the knowledge that you need to build this, ha, kudos, because you right there are literally becoming a proficient blockchain developer. You have what it takes to build anything you want, okay? This is a very, a very, a very extensive project, and I'm going to make sure that every single step that we take along the way, you are going to grasp all the information that I have to share. Okay, we are going to learn a lot together, and that's what we're here for to make ourselves the best that we can be. We are going to code the Lotto admin portal. This admin portal will provide the game administrators live game stats such as current Lotto draw ID. It will display the amount of ERC 20 tokens accumulated in the jackpot. This amount of tokens will increment as players buy Lotto tickets. If there are no winners in a draw, once the draw closes, the amount will be transferred to the next lotto draw. The jackpot will keep increasing until someone wins it. This entire functionality will auto-execute in the backend right after the draw timer ends. Obviously we will code the entire backend in this tutorial. The moment the draw timer ends, the backend will proceed to execute the functions inside the lotto smart contract to close the active lotto draw. Request the random numbers from the chain link VRF subscription, then slice the values and set them as the winning numbers. Once it's all performed, it will identify if there were any winners in this draw and update the smart contract accordingly. The smart contract has been written to set a percentage fee over every ticket sale that will be deposited on the smart contract as sales revenue. The rest of every ticket sale will be added into the jackpot pool. If multiple winning tickets are sold, we will divide the amount of ERC20 tokens accumulated in the jackpot by the amount of winners, then issue the prize payment accordingly. Let's start discussing the project, okay? What are the challenges in the project? Number one, the first challenge that we have is that once we obtain those random numbers from Chainlink, and we parse out, what am I going to do? And you're going to learn all this. What am I going to do? In the smart contract, I am going to be carving or slicing the information that I obtained from Chainlink. In this case, those random numbers that Chainlink is going to give me, I am going to be slicing that and obtaining from particular sections in that entire number value. I am going to be obtaining certain digits and those will be my numbers, okay? So that's number one, we are doing that, which means that in the smart contract, when we initialize the lotto draw, every single lotto draw will have an ID, okay? We start the lotto draw, we let it run, and I'm going to discuss how the running and the operation in the smart contract is gonna look like, but let's, let's picture this. We're gonna let it run, right? The moment the lotto draw has ended, and by the way, how do you obtain the start and stop? We are going to be capturing the block timestamp. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the block, and then from the block, I'll grab the timestamp. I know it's not as secure as other methods, but I don't want to make this more complicated than it is. Let's take everything, one step at a time. Let's not try to learn how to build a jet engine if we don't know how to build a propeller engine. I am not an alien, I'm not a reptilian, or I'm not an AI. I am a human being, and the way, for example, in my case, the way that I learn is by taking baby steps. I am not going to learn the high, most difficult thing first. Instead, what I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn the basics, okay? And I'm gonna start working my way up there. You know, I learned the basics of doing this. Okay, let me add a little bit more into the mix. That's how I able to learn and understand everything faster. So with that said, I close the draw, meaning that I already reached the end. Now here's the fun part. I am going to be calling Chainlink. My smart contract, it's going to have an interaction with Chainlink VRF, okay? Which allows me to request number randomness. Chainlink is going to provide through Chainlink's Oracle, it's going to provide me, and by the way, Chainlink allows me to interact with applications of Chain in my smart contract, meaning that I can call Chainlink and obtain X value and, and retrieve the value into the smart contract, right? 
So I am a, I am calling chain link in the same smart contract. I, I don't need to go with a separate script or a separate smart contract just to deal with the chain link interaction. No, we are integrating chain links a VRF function into the smart contract. And this will be the consumer VRF. And I am going to discuss everything step by step. So when I close the draw, the moment I close the draw, what am I going to do? I am going to reach out to Chainlink. Hey, give me the winning numbers. But in this case, Chainlink is just going to give me a long number value, like a very long number that I am going to obtain or I'm going to slice out of it the numbers that I need. And those will be my six numbers. So that's number one. That's one of the most important things that we have to do. Number two, now every single ticket that was bought in the draw, okay, that users bought in the draw, I have to get every number and compare that number to the winning numbers, you know, the winning numbers. So every number from the tickets will be compared to the winning numbers. That is a problem, or at least that is a challenge. I'm not gonna say it's a problem, it's a challenge because I have to figure it out, okay? It's a challenge that I had to overcome. And you might say, well, yeah, but you can do for loops. I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on. Yes, I can do for loops, but what's the problem with doing an extensive for loop in the blockchain or in a smart contract. The problem of looping and validating values one by one is that every single action, every single transaction, gas fee, okay? I cannot go that route because it's not gonna be efficient. It's gonna be very expensive. And second, it's going to take us a lot of time. Plus it might not give us the result because we ran out of you know, of gas. Like we didn't provide enough gas to complete the transaction. Let's say we have 200 tickets. Are you going to be checking every single one of them one by one? No, I am not. What am I going to do to overcome that challenge? Check this out. Instead of me grabbing every single number from the six numbers in that ticket to compare that to the winning numbers, instead, the moment the user bought the ticket, the user selected random numbers, the user buys their own numbers or we provide random numbers. What if I instead grab those numbers and put them in order of value. Meaning that if I have 10, seven, six, nine, three, I am going to start three, six, seven, nine, 10, and so forth. I'm going to be arranging that in order. Once I obtain the winning numbers, the moment I close the draw, I am going to request to Chainlink the winning numbers or the num number randomness. Okay, I obtain the winning numbers from there. We are going to extract that information, get the winning numbers, I am going to put those numbers in order, meaning that I am going to sort the array in order. Once I do that, remember, I have them in order, but what good does that do if I still have to check one by one? Mm, I don't need to. Because instead, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be encrypting or I'm going to be hashing this in KeyCac 256. Now, the moment the user buys a ticket, I could be instead encrypting or hashing those values into KeyCac 256 I'll do the same thing with the winning numbers. What do I have to check? That both hashes match. You see? Why did I have to rearrange them in order? Because even though that a user might have all the winning numbers, but they're not in the same order as the winning numbers, we cannot do that. The hash value that we obtain once we hash this into using KK256, I am not going to obtain the same hash value. Even though that I have the same numbers, they're not in the same order, meaning that I'm not going to be able to obtain or at least have the same hash. So I have to first sort those numbers in order, and then I have to hash them using KeyCAC 256, which is just gonna provide me a long hash by 32. I'll go ahead and compare both. I'll compare the ticket number hash and the winning number hash. Bah, mind blowing, right? That way I don't have to go crazy and check every single number in the ticket against every single number in the winning range or the winning numbers, the six numbers. So there you have it. This is one way that we can use to be more efficient in transactions. And you have to think outside of the box. In blockchain, I know it's going to work if you do the for loop and I bet and I know that you are able to do that, right? You can make that happen. I have no doubts that you can have, make it happen. Is it efficient? 
Absolutely not. Is it gonna involve mo way more gas fees? Absolutely yes, right? Those are the things that we have to validate, right? So let's cut it short here. I please ask you to watch every single video because the idea in this tutorial is for you to learn how to master this. I can share the GitHub repo and I can literally give you the instructions as I always do so that you can run it and test it. But the idea for you is to learn. I can do this all day. That's not a problem. It's for me to teach you that you have everything that you need, that you now understand everything in solidity. And then once you see the smart contract finalized, you know exactly what we're doing. That's the whole purpose of this, okay? This is a very amazing tutorial. And this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, is going to give you so many great tools and techniques that will make you the blockchain developer that you want to be, all right? Let's go ahead and build the end to the lotto. Boom.